Moving into running efficiency, we want to be looking at side on view, rear view, and front on to look for things like so, for like the technical model that I discuss. I like to see with their foot contacts uh, with the ground is that un relatively close to underneath their center of mass? Um, is it quite a toey contact? Is it quite a heel contact? Or is it a, um, more around the midfoot? Hip and shoulders, are they dropping, rotating excessively? And you can see that with the front on, rear on view. And then also their heel recovery, their backside mechanics, which you can see quite well with uh, their um, uh, rear view. To improve their efficiency with these, obviously running slow, anywhere under, under 4.5 minutes per second for most AFL athletes is, would be running at a steady pace. Moving into resilience, we want to be considering groins, carbs, and hamstrings as the big three ticket ovens of games missed due to those soft tissue injuries. And they, um, if we put a good program in place, they generally we can mitigate those. Um, so we want to make sure we've got things like barbell RDLs for proximal hamstring, anywhere between three to four reps of five to eight repetitions with good load. Uh, make sure the feet are underneath the hips. Um, and that you're yeah, lifting around mid shin or as long as their hamstrings can allow before their back starts to curve. That's around weighted Nornix, two, three sets of three to five repetitions to get that peak force, um, which we can track on the Nor board. Um, but ultimately, we want to try and get as much force as we can eccentrically with those. Moving over to technology, you want to be well versed with GPS, get understanding of the athlete uh, and your conditioning prescription and and are they a fast accelerator? So if they're doing 150 metre reps and they get to that high speed threshold quite early in the rep, then they're going to get more distance um, per rep um, from obviously the, high, the exposure of that prescription compared to a slower accelerator. Um, you want to have an idea of their output and work rate generally in football drills. Um, this is particularly important when you're looking after reconditioning athletes where you can be quite individualised in prescription and you're making live decisions on getting them as close to plan A as you can. Uh, four steps for having strong, robust markers to maximize the uh, athletes, both from a stiffness point of view, so drop jumps, single leg drop jumps, but also power, counter movement jumps, um, to be able to track and monitor your program. Also, I love them for isometric efforts, whether you're trying to do max force. From a stiffness point of view, so your plyometric work, which typically we do pre-field, um, we want to coach the athlete to have pretension in the end, so that stiffness throughout the whole body in the end to maintain good positions, and that way they're not sloppy when they hit the ground. We want quick contacts, hot coals as a great cue to enforce the athlete to be able to generate force as rapidly as possible. Um, you can, if the athlete isn't ready for biometric work due to a lower limb injury, then you can use rate of force amount of ISOs. I found it to showing the athlete how quickly uh, within 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds they're generating force um, is a great way to get that stimulus. Um, but typically if they're doing stiffness work, plyometric work, we want to think vector, say is it medial lateral work to improve their agility, is it horizontal to improve their acceleration, or is it more your vertical um, to work on that upright aerial jumping and um, sprinting tolerance. And then last one, game speed, which is a massive one, obviously with the work of Franz Boss, Jones Dodu, uh, John Pryor, Dean Benton, these guys, it's, it's quite popular these days. So I break that in three different areas, have a technical model with all of them, which you can create um, over time with, with experience. Uh, you've got your agility with, with football. We want that open step where we're, where we're moving one direction and quickly swivel the hips and shoulders to move another direction without stopping. Um, we want a power cut with the outside leg, ideally, um, to be able to create as much space away from an opponent. It's quite an off offensive movement pattern. Um, to get away from space and not get tackled um, and without any shuttle so you can maintain or shuffling the feet so you can maintain speed and power cut. Uh, obviously take into account context and demands. So for um, forwards, we want to be doing a lot of like and, and defenders, they want to have that disassociation. They can track the ball, track the, the players that are about to kick the ball. 